Hello friends. In today's session, we learn how to interpret regression results. Okay. Uh, before we can I continue, I request you to download this question paper. The link is given just in the description. You can download the question and keep that aside while we'll be discussing how to interpret this. Okay. So let's start. Uh, this question has about uh, Australian housing sector, which has expanded rapidly with high price and demand growth. Okay, so now there is the growth rate of house prices seem to have escalated after the concessionary arrangements in this uh, existing capital gain tax. Okay, in uh, 1999 and the first home buyers grant effected from July 2000. Okay. And as an econometrician working for the Productivity Commission, you want to analyze the house price in determinants over 1974 to 2008. Okay. And then you are going to obtain the following regression results. So one, two, three. Three regressions. Okay. Before that, let's know what is actually concessionary arrangements in the existing capital gain tax. So the capital gain tax is the tax on uh, if you have invested in the stock market and you mm, gain profit you made profit from selling that stock uh, after one year of holding that okay so that is the capital gain tax then uh, will be applicable capital gain tax mm -hmm. will be applicable on that uh, incremental value of the stock and uh, there is some concessionary, so Australian government gave some concession for uh, this capital gain tax so that you can retain more profit than before. Okay, so this was one arrangement that was done in 1999, and then in the next year, July 2000, who, uh, whoever purchased their first home, they got some grant. Okay, so these two actually very favorable to own a house okay so we want to know what actually happened so that uh, the price became high and this housing sector has expanded rapidly and then that is that happened with high price and demand growth okay so basically this is an investigation into that okay so what we were doing is actually we are looking to the period 1974 to 2008 in between that, we, what you are going to do is, there are three regressions, okay? So first regression is from 1974, quarter one to 1999, okay? So this is one zero four observation, then sub period two from 2000 to 2008. So why we are doing this two? Actually, we want to look into, we are actually breaking into this period so that we can know what is happening in the period before the implementation of new ch these uh, changes and after the changes okay so these one and two are related to pre and post the regulatory changes and then we'll be comparing that to the full period that means from 1974 to 2008 okay so these are the uh, three results that we got let's know what these variables are okay so each of them so C as usual is the constant, okay. And then H, Q, G, Y, R, X, M, C. So you can see that here there are six independent variables, okay. And our variable, dependent variable is log of house pricing, okay. And remember all these are the variables, value and all these are actually in log form, natural log form, okay. Okay, so let's uh, see household prices, that's the real household price. HQ is dwelling approvals, G is government expenses for housing, Y is real GDP, R is interest rate, X is nominal exchange rate, and C is material costs. Okay, and these are all based on quarterly data and they are natural logs and seasonally adjusted. Okay, now we'll be interpreting this coefficients of HQ and MC, that means dwelling approvals and material cost for each of the three regressions. Then after that, we'll know 
as an economic decision you have to look for the monetary and fiscal policy impact right so that also will be looking into then what do you infer about the overall significance of the estimated models that we'll also look into then we'll look at this and if there is any structural break between pre and post policy regimes that means 74 to 99 and 2000 to 2008 okay so we'll see if there is any structural break between this okay so these four questions are there okay now let's answer them one by one so before we do anything with these regression results first thing you have to do is just put them in this just write those values okay how do you write it this is household price estimated and then you just put the values where did you get these values from these values are nothing well, but the regression results okay these values okay and write them in the equation format so whenever you are going to uh, write the interpretation then you can use this you can look at this okay so here we have used these variables values okay so this uh, then second one second sub period there is 36 observations then you are getting this second regression result then likewise third result okay so now we can interpret that uh, from a question a that uh, we already know that the variables are measured in natural logs and they are that's why they are in log log form okay so that is why the coefficients are actually the elasticities okay that means you have to deal you have to uh, tell that in terms of percentage okay so with one percent increase in the number of housing approvals house prices increase by 0 0.10 how much say? this is from here 0 0.10 then 0 0.16 from second equation then 0 0.11 from third equation okay respectively and their relevant t statistics show that the coefficient of hq are statistically significant at five percent level in questions one three and uh, in equation one and three they are five percent level and at ten percent level in equation two okay why it is like that t, t statistics let's see here you can see the t statistic from this column from this column the t statistics okay so as you can see these are significant at uh, one and three significant at five percent level of significance right so at five percent level of significance the t statistics is significant huh? okay and ten percent in lab equation two okay so we are looking into hq and mc hq and mc okay so let's see hq and mc this is for hq 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 okay then mc 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 okay so we can see that those values use the thumb rule okay t statistics thumb rule so that means if your t value is greater than 2 okay if your t value acha for hq is actually talking about hq okay now let's look at hq only so this is one this is two this is three so for one and three this is uh, for uh, statistically significant for five percent and for two it is for ten percent level okay statistically significant okay the next and then with one percent change in material cost hp rises by 0 0.08 percent okay and 0 0.90 percent for the first and second sub periods 
then for the entire period when it is talking about 74 to 2008 then hp falls by 0 0.18 percent with one percent increase okay so for mc just look at the values mc okay their coefficient values that's what we have written here okay then next question b that based on our estimates do you think monetary and fiscal policies affected house price so when you are answering this type of question monetary fiscal policy then you have to remember which are the instruments of monetary policy and the fiscal policy so we know that monetary policy will be reflected through the change in interest rate in okay and its impacts okay so it means that if one percent increase in the interest rate the household price in declines significantly by 0.08 percent and 0.36 percent in the first and second periods okay so where they are getting it just go back to here look at the r here is the r the rate of interest and here is the r rate of interest you can see the negative sign in front of them for the first two okay for the whole period you can see it is a positive relation okay but let's see first and sub period okay but for the whole period higher interest rate appears to raise hp but such impacts are statistically insignificant and also the whole period rate of interest is positive which is not up to expectation right if your rate of interest there should be negative relationship between household price rate of interest isn't it if the rate of interest low that means uh, household demand will be high and household prices will be high and vice versa so whole period uh, interest rate is showing up insignificant statistically okay and what about fiscal policy for fiscal policy the relevant metric will be the coefficient of government expenditure okay, that is g so from the result you can see that with one percent increase in g hp raises and falls by 0 0.01 percent okay for both first and second sub periods then then they are also statistically insignificant okay so if you look at the p values t statistics for the g for the g what is the p value p value is 0.3469 here it is also 0 0.5840 but for the whole period this is significant because that is the less than this point zero three six zero is less than the zero five significance level okay but here they are greater than the significance level so government expenditure coefficient is uh, statistically insignificant significant for the first two periods the sub periods okay okay ne next is the overall significance of the model that is overall significance of the model can be tested as like this is the PRF. What is our hypothesis in our health hypothesis significance? That means our all the coefficient of the independent variables should be equal to zero. H1 alternative will, will be at least one of the betas is not equal to zero. Okay. Now we will use the F statistics, and this is R square by K R square one minus R square divided by N minus K minus one. So we'll get this thing for the three okay so for the first one by putting the r square value in what is number of observations k is the parameters and uh, the minus one then that is the degrees of freedom the first one it is giving you 22.95 second one one to 7.78 okay and entire period clear this one so it means you are actually using the data that has been uh, come from that has come from the regression results okay so at one percent level of significance you can find the critical values like this and the calculated f values is greater than critical f so we reject the null hypothesis uh, so our calculated values is 22.95 here it is 12.7 which are actually greater than this critical values and critical values are actually derived from the table using the degrees of freedom and the numerator and denominator okay so uh, c is done now we'll be going to the d part d is that uh, whatever our question 
for D. D was our question for. Okay, let me check it. Whether there is any structural break between treatment it means if they, the uh, results vary from for these two periods. Okay, so if they they vary, then there is a structural break. If they if there is they don't vary, the results don't vary for two sub periods. Then there is no structural break. Okay, that is exactly what we are going to test. So that is why we are in all hypothesis there is no structural break, and alternative is structural break is present in the time period. Right? Fine. So two unrestricted regressions for two sub periods are given by equation like this. Okay. So what are these? This is the first sub period. This is the second sub period. So these are unrestricted. We are not restricting anything. That is what means. And the restricted equation for the entire sample is this one is your actually for the whole period. Okay. So when you get it, now we want to know in these two, in these two equations, these two equations, first and second, if your alpha is zero equal to gamma zero, means all these uh, coefficients, if they are equal to zero, each other so that means there was no structural break that is what our null hypothesis is okay so we're trying to prove that so you run the regression one two three three models run the regression okay then you get the ssr sum of squared errors for unrestricted one unrestricted two and then degrees of freedom find out the degrees of freedom that is 104 that was the n and minus 7 n minus k n was uh, sorry k was 6 minus 1 so you are getting 97 degrees of freedom here it is 29 here it is 103 so now the f statistic uh, formula is changing here hmm? so this f statistics is changing uh, because it is a structural break test and the first one we studied about uh, here actually that is about uh, overall significance okay so remember this formula don't get confused between that so the test statistics is we are going to use the sum of squared errors so restricted minus unrestricted okay you use these values and then find out the f values now you go to find f table and find with five percent level of significance with this degrees of freedom, what is the critical value? Now you can see that this if calculated is greater than 2.09. So you are going to reject the null hypothesis. That is, there is no structural break is rejected. This implies that house prices in Australia, explained by number of independent variables, have undergone structural break between the pre and post policy regimes. Okay. Hence, we have proved that uh, there is there is a uh, impact of this change in. The regulator policy or the stock um, whatever the policy was introduced in 1999 and 2000 okay okay it means that uh, this model should be estimated and interpreted separately for two different periods rather than using one equation for all the entire period okay so uh, you can download this i have also linked given the link to this uh, whole pdf uh, sir so you can use this keep it okay download it and uh, read it how the language is done how the language is used how it is interpreted okay see you next video thank you very much